Okay, um, time for the last section in uh, chapter five. Uh, this one is about counting rules. So um, let's get to it. So um, the basic idea is that um, we're gonna get slightly more and more complicated ways of counting how many things, how many ways things can happen. So the first one is called the multiplication rule of counting. And the idea here is that if there's a sequence of choices and each of them has however many choices they have, we can just multiply them together to get our output. So um, here's an example. And again, this is from Dr. Love again. So um, if uh, the University of Oregon has four jerseys, two shoes, four pants, three helmets, and four socks, how many different uniform options are there, assuming that you wear one jersey, one shoe, one pant, one helmet, one sock? Then it says if each one is equally likely, what's the probability that the football players wear green pants and a green jersey? Um, there's a more complicated version of this. Um, if you ever see it, Sonic, they advertise the six million different ways you can order um, uh, a drink with all the flavor add-ins and stuff, although that assumes that you might put, you know, four weird things together. Anyway, um, to work this out, we can say, well, there are four jerseys, four pants, uh, two shoes, three helmets, and four socks. So we just multiply those together, four times four times three times four times two, and we get 384. Um, options. So that's a lot of different kinds of uh, uniforms. Then if every option is equally likely, what's the probability that Oregon football players wear green pants and a green jersey? Well, if we're just thinking about pants and a jersey, we could multiply all the different counts up because there's one way to pick pants and one way to pick a jersey and the other ones, which gives us 24 ways. And then we would take 24 out of 384, which gives us six and a quarter percent. We could actually do it more simply and just say if we're thinking about green jerseys and green pants, there's one in four uh, times one in four, which is one in 16, which is actually the six and uh, a quarter percent comes from that. Um, now, the question of whether or not it's actually equally likely, right? It probably isn't because they probably do wear their matching uh, things more often. But that assumption, if we can build that in, that makes it possible to work out much more complicated things. So you can start to think about not just simple card tricks or dice rolling like we've been talking about, but the idea of Yahtzee, right? Yahtzee has five dice and thinking about how many possible ways it happens, having these counting rules will make that a very possible thing to solve instead of a kind of a, oh my God, that's so gigantic, I could never figure that out sort of thing. Now there's two ways that we think about selecting groups of things. And one of those is called permutation, which is where we care about the order. And the other one is called combination, where the order doesn't matter. And notationally, um, we're going to use um, NPR and NCK or NCR uh, to refer to that. And there's the formulas for it, but I'm going to talk about them in a little more detail. Notice that both of them are based off factorials. Again, factorials are one of those things I think you learned about back in algebra class somewhere. But the idea that the factorial of a whole number is just the number, the number minus one, all the way down. So 10 factorial is 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Now we're going to have multiple factorials. And so the math isn't quite as gigantic as that sounds because a lot of the numbers are going to cancel. Um, when we have combinations, you're going to actually have three numbers that are going to be factorial uh, in there, one on the top and two on the bottom. So you can see combinations, there's going to be fewer of them, which makes some sense because some of the permutations will be treated the same, right? What order you draw the cards in, for instance, usually doesn't matter. Combinations are what we're going to use the most in statistics. So if you only learn one thing, combinations are what you want to have. Anyway, um, this idea oops, that um, there are you know, six people and we're going to form two uh, groups of two well, we can take six factorial, which is 720, again, a pretty big number. And we're going to divide that by two factorial times six minus two, which is four factorial, which is two times six times five times which is 24. And that gives us 15. So there's 15 pairs because we don't care which one is picked first and which one is picked second. If we think about a case where you do care which one is picked first and which one is second. So for instance, there's a contest with six people maybe it's a race or it's a whatever kind of contest. And how many ways can you give out the first award and the second award? Well, in that case, it's gonna be six factorial, which really means six times five, 
four factorial will keep going six, five, four, three, two, one. But on the formula, we put four, three, two, one on the bottom, cancel, cancel, we get six times five. Because again, the person can't win both first and second place. So six times five is 30. Again, permutations aren't as common in statistics, but they're a lot easier to calculate. In practice, whenever I'm going to do those, I'm going to always do them in a spreadsheet. Now, you could go to StatCrunch, but actually StatCrunch is a little bit trickier for that. But if we do combination, combin uh, 6, 2, that gives us our 15, just like we had in the example. And permut 6, 2 gives us uh, the larger number, 30, that we had um, for how many ways you can finish the race. You can do factorial, that's just fact. But again, that number gets very big very quickly. And in fact, fact, fact of like 99 uh, pretty much crashes uh, anything you do. So you can't actually do the large factorial. So that canceling is important. And combin and permit, uh, permit actually do those uh, calculations automatically for you. So again, if you ever have to calculate those, I would come over to Excel or uh, Google Sheets to do that because I think that's going to be a lot uh, quicker. Your calculator probably has a button to do that. Um, if you have a fancy scientific calculator like you took AP courses with, um, there's a prob menu and then inside of there are combinations and permutations. Um, even on those little $10 calculators, they do that. The one on my phone doesn't have combinations, the one that's kind of built in, um, but I think you can get to fancier ones without too, too. Um, much if you did want to actually have the calculations do that. All right, so again, we have 10 speakers for a conference. Um, six of the speakers will talk in the morning and four of them will talk after the lunch break. So how many schedules of six speakers could we have in the morning? Again, that's going to be 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. But notationally, we're going to think of that as 10 factorial over 4 factorial. Um, with the canceling out of that. And then of the remaining four, there's just going to be four factorial of those. And again, we can work that out like that. And then if we say how many possible ways are there for those together, we just take the top morning numbers times the afternoon numbers and multiply them together because that's the simple product rule, just like the pants for the Oregon football team. All right, again, calculation wise, this is annoying, but you're never going to have to calculate it by hand. And like I said, I think it's easiest to do it in a spreadsheet. So again, if we went back to our spreadsheet and we said permutation of uh, six speakers out of 10, that gives us that 151,000 number that's right here. And then if we set up the remaining four, we could either do that as a permut of four comma four, or for that matter, we could do that as factorial four. Oops, equals factorial four. And then the product rule just says multiply those two numbers together. And that gives us that giant number, 3,628,000 that you have there. Okay, now we can start to get into fancier card tricks. We could think about uh, soccer teams, um, whatever. And again, you can walk through those examples if you want. If we think about codes or license plates, we can use those same sorts of ideas about um, counting through them. Okay, so that's counting techniques. Again, um, arithmetically sort of a pain to do, but mathematically not actually, you know, that hard to calculate. So that's chapter five. Remember your book has more information. You can get access to those slides if you want to walk through those examples more slowly. You could watch this video again. Um, the textbook, again, has a lot of it in there, or you can get the help that's built into the homework problems. So, all right, there's chapter five.